What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and enjoy our content because we've got a lot coming to you. Now, today on the 1st and 15th, you know, I get inspiration for all these ideas and these concepts and things that I talk about from a wide range of things. And this one came from looking at a photo that I happened across of myself and Drew Down back in 1999. And, you know, we were just at a party. I was chilling with Drew Down, took a picture, whatever. But it made me think back to his most famous and probably my favorite song, his Pimp of the Year, which is a masterpiece on many levels, shows his flair, his style, and I think just expertly did it. He had a great video that went along with the song for Pimp of the Year, produced by Ant Banks. And every time I hear the intro and then the give it up, give it up, give it to me. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. So, you know, that was originally on as a Fools from the Streets LP that was released in 1993 via C-Note Records. After gaining some buzz independently, you know, they did a deal, C-Note, and then ended up getting Drew Down on Relativity Records, which then put pimp of the year as the first song on the album because it wasn't that way on fools from the streets but it became the first song off the album explicit game and this is when relativity in 1994 was having a lot of success you got bone thugs and harmony you know common was on there the beat nuts all kinds of people uh, fat joe so uh relativity was doing big things and drew down was another one oakland putting it down killing the game and you know, of course, the sample that Ant Banks used was from the whole darn family's Seven Minutes of Funk. And this song is what we're going to be focusing on here on the 1st and 15th, because the whole darn family was the name of the group, but the whole darn family seemed to use this sample because it's been used so many times. I'm going to go through some of my favorite and some of what I think are the most noteworthy examples of the songs, uh, Seven Minutes of Funk being sampled. And of course, as always, hit me in the comments down below if I missed one that you really enjoyed or I just didn't mention it or what have you. Or if you like the songs that I mentioned, then you can obviously talk about those too in the comments because these are some of not only the big songs that use this sample, but also are some of the big songs, some of my favorites in rap history, Pimp of the Year being one of them. Now, early in the game, you know, as a young youth, as the Wu would say, I heard Dana Dane's Love at First Sight, which uses uh, Seven Minutes of Funk. Now, what's interesting about Dana Dane, Love at First Sight, produced by Herbie Lovebug from the Dana Dane with Fame album in 1987, is that <clears throat> Herbie doesn't use it as the sole driving force. There's a lot of other elements, and it's in parts of the song. It's not in other parts of the song. So he uses it very differently than a lot of the things that I'm going to discuss. And that's part of why I think the love at first sight isn't normally identified with uh seven minutes of funk because love at first sight was a single by dana dane dana dane with fame went gold so people knew the song it was a great song still is and dana dane was immensely popular when the song was coming out but another song came out in 1987 by epmd it's my thing and this also used seven minutes of funk but unlike what Herbie Lovebug did on Love at First Sight, It's My Thing, uses basically the beginning of the Seven Minutes of Funk instrumental and loops it, but then also has almost no, if barely any other instrumentation and doesn't have a lot of sounds coming in and out, whereas Love at First Sight, that's got a lot of musicality to it, whereas It's My Thing by EPMD is very stripped down and it's very much that loop and... You know, it's done amazingly. Uh, I think Eric and Parrish definitely did a great job with that and helped Strictly Business be such a great album a year later in 1987. But I remember hearing It's My Thing, and at the, the instant when I heard it, I knew The Love at First Sight with Dana Dane, but I also knew EPMD had done it in a new, exciting, <clears throat> and very different way than Herbie Lovebug had, which made me love It's My Thing. One of my favorite EPMD songs, but it's also, I think, a phenomenal song in general, which we'll get to more because the next big time I remember hearing it was the Alcoholics with Only When I'm Drunk from the, their debut album in 93. And so we're fast forwarding, you know, five, six years and we get the Alcoholics using it and it's gone from It's My Thing, which is braggadocio. It's gone from Love at First Sight. 
and it's gone from the instrumental the seven minutes of funk <clears throat> to now being only when i'm drunk they're burping on the song it's more comedy it was the second half of a video they put out so the alcoholics were like we're pushing this forward whereas it's my thing and love at first sight didn't have videos or at least i didn't see them if they had them so <clears throat> the alcoholics were putting it on a major scale and, <clears throat> and then you're seeing the alcoholics have this super funk stuff going on in a different way than a lot of the funk was being used by the other west coast artists that were emerging and dominating of course in 1993 with gangster rap and and other things that were doing big things musically not only on the west coast but other other places too of course with mc breed and x clan using a lot of the parliament funkadelic george clinton type of stuff but all that to be said <clears throat> the song really got a big force in a few years later when jay-z and foxy brown with the ain't no brother like the one i got now that one produced by big jazz and like the alcoholics like epmd it's really a loop of just that beginning part of uh the seven minutes of funk so it doesn't have the love at first sight uh breakdowns like dana dane's version does and this was to me the first big explosion other than arguably drew down but drew down didn't uh explode nationally and become a huge song whereas i think they know brother really got jay-z big time on a national scene and it put him with a female gave him a different look and a different energy because with reasonable doubt yeah can't knock the hustle with mary j blige but that's singing and that's also a different uh type of vibe with the the song whereas ain't no brother really is it was yes about finances and you know tricking off and i'm the best and and foxy then taking the opposite perspective of i'm gonna fleece this dude and get what i can because i'm the best and my nana is the best and all this other stuff but it still had funk and it still had power and it still had force whereas only when i'm drunk was funny and all that other stuff so the ain't no brother really to me was more in line with what drew down was doing but jay-z and reasonable doubt became this iconic album and nutty professor it was also in that film as well so there's all kinds of things that jay-z's song did that none of the other incarnations of songs that had used the seven minutes of funk had done up to that point and you know that was cool and it lasted a long time for several other songs have sampled seven minutes of funk since 1996 but i thought it was crazy that in 2023 buster rhymes brought it back uh you know with his luxury life single and he had made a video for it boy Ray is on there and they have a very similar male female dynamic even the chorus kind of is similar to the ain't no brother from jay-z and foxy brown so i thought that was wild so it's one of those full circle moments where yes the song originated way back in the day in 1976 and then it gets uh 1996 20 years later and now from 96 to 2023 going into 2024 because buster rhymes blockbuster album is still making moves but you know this song just keeps going and going and going it's seven minutes of funk and the whole darn family like i said used it but what i didn't understand and appreciate uh because I really started listening as a little kid to rap in 85 and by 87 I'd start being able to learn and go back and talking to more and more people and learning more and my friends would let me hear different songs more and more as I got older so older over the years I then started to understand and appreciate that even Dana Dane and EPMD weren't the first ones so I don't remember exactly along the way when i heard all these other songs that came before 1987 but i wanted to highlight three of them because it is important to understand and document and break down this chronology of the music because it's extremely important and the earliest one that i remember hearing as i was going through and learning more and more about rap and studying it and getting so much into it was the super rapping back in 1979 by grandmaster flash and the Furious five now, of course, in 79, most of the music was replayed uh, by the live bands. And most famously, of course, was Chic with Good Times that was replayed by the Sugar Hill House Band for Rapper's Delight. But 
the players that played on Super Rappin' basically uh, replayed elements of Seven Minutes of Funk on Super Rappin', and of course, Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five enjoyed a lot of success with that song. It's not their biggest song, it's not the message or anything, but it was before the message, and it was a huge song, and as I was learning about rap and loving it, and that made me think back to, oh man, that's how... That's the same type of beat that Dana Dane had used on Love at First Sight and EPMD used on It's My Thing. So all these things were getting me to thinking. Then I'd also heard later in the game the Sinister 2's Rocket Don't Stop It, which also has it replayed as well. So it wasn't a sample yet because that technology back in 1981 wasn't there, or at least it wasn't being utilized in that manner because of the technology that the Sinister 2 would have had access to and they just you know replayed it similar to how Super Rappin was replayed with Grandmaster Flash and Furious 5 two years earlier then fast forward and this is where it gets kind of interesting because <clears throat> you have Curtis Blow with his street rock song which was from uh, Kingdom Blow in 1986 but why this is interesting is because Curtis Blow the first rapper signed to a major label when he signed with Mercury Records, but he was that guy that was seemingly, you know, towing and bridging all these lines between these different eras of rap and these different business accomplishments and milestones and tours. And he was a producer with the Fat Boys and doing all this different stuff. He had go-go music. He had Bob Dylan collaborative <laughs> appearing on Street Rock. And, you know, the crazy thing is, when you then listen to Seven Minutes of Funk incorporated and utilized on street rock, you just understand that, wow, Grandmaster Flash to Furious 5, Sinister 2, Curtis Blow, these are significant records, early records, that before 1987 all came out and had used the whole Dard family's Seven Minutes of Funk and had used it prominently, either by replaying it or however Curtis Blow, I think that's a replay as well, but these three different artists, three different years, and really three different eras of rap, even though it's only seven years apart, it's so dramatic and so pronounced. You can hear the evolution. You can hear the growth and the development of the music and how it changed and evolved to where uh, Drew Down and the Alcoholics and Dana Dane and EPMD and Jay-Z and Busta Rhymes most recently, for the examples I'm citing, are all using the same song and using it similarly using it differently using it for a song about love using it for a song about pimping using it for a song about you know i'm the best using it for braggadocio using it for humor and that to me is the beauty of it like uh guru said you can't own no loops on i believe it's take it personal but the bottom line is to me i've never been disappointed when i hear other people reuse a sample or use a sample in essentially or exactly the same way as long as they make the good song so by the time i was hearing pimp of the year i'd already heard love at first sight i already heard already heard it's my thing and it's my thing was big in maryland uh growing up you know baltimore and washington people would play that song a lot and that was at least my introduction really to epmd hearing it on the radio on one of the six stations I could get between Baltimore and DC that played rap occasionally. But I had figured out and come up with my own little chart and got all this stuff to figure out how I could hear rap. And it's my thing, did get a little bit of play. So I knew who they were. And then when I saw the vinyl, they didn't even write EPMD, it was E, uh, if I'm remembering right, E P E E space M D. So even everything evolved and that's the great thing about rap because it's constantly growing evolving and changing in ways that are you know on the one hand rapid and dramatic and on the other hand consistent to where you have a song from 1976 seven minutes of funk that's been used all these different times and all these big songs by all these significant artists and then Busta rhymes brings it back again so you know that's why you know just looking at this picture of drew down and me back from uh 99 really sparked all these thoughts and all these ideas because just thinking about his career that song and and pimp of the year and how it all stems from seven minutes of funk got a shout out aunt banks for producing that song aunt banks always does an amazing job on the production one of the all-time greats that doesn't get enough shine 
Shout out to Ant Banks as always. <clears throat> so yeah, that's what I want to talk about here on the 1st and 15th. I hope you enjoy it right down there. Hit us in the comment section. You can like, subscribe, and please join Unique Access. There's three different tiers, different ways you can help and support us and get us to the next level of the game. And please tell a friend to get to Unique Access. We got more than 50,000 subscribers. We need to get to that 75,000 as soon as possible. So please spread the word, Unique Access Entertainment. You can follow me at Soren Baker on social media. I appreciate your support, and I'll catch you next time on the 1st and 15th.